In this video, I'm going to give a quick overview of the different strengthening mechanisms that are possible in metals, and then talk about one of them, strain hardening. So there are lots of different ways in which we can increase the strength, the yield strength essentially, of metals, but they all have the same primary feature. In essentially every case, we're looking for ways that impede dislocation motion. When it's harder for dislocations to move, more force needs to be applied to the material, thus increasing its yield strength. So some of the ways that we can do this are through strain hardening. This is the one I will talk about today. And this is essentially just increasing the dislocation density so that you have more dislocation-dislocation interactions, which requires then more strength, more stress to continue deforming. The second is through grain boundaries. So grain boundaries can act as barriers to dislocation motion, although in order to do this, you need a very high density of grain boundaries. So you really have to get to a pretty small um, grain size in order for that one to work. Another method is solid solution strengthening. So essentially by creating an alloy, that's why most of the strongest materials are, are actually alloys. So you can do solid solution strengthening and those uh, solution atoms could either be substitutional or they can be interstitial. A fourth way is precipitation hardening. And again, for precipitation hardening, you need a multi-component system. So many, many alloy systems are also strengthened with the presence of precipitates. And then one last way is dispersion hardening. And dispersion hardening is similar in a way to precipitation hardening in that they both have a second phase present that is causing the dislocations to slow down. The difference is that in dispersion hardening, it's a second phase entirely separate from the composition of the first phase, whereas the precipitates are a combination of the alloy. Of the alloy there. So an example here would be that you have a nickel aluminum alloy and you have Ni3Al precipitates, for example. And uh, an example of dispersion hardening would be that you have, for example, ZrO2, zirconia particles in a metal. So in some iron alloy, for example. Okay, so we will work through each one of these one at a time in the videos that follow, although we will start right now and take a look at how strain hardening works. So in the case of strain hardening, the dislocations themselves are the obstacles to other dislocation motion. And so we get strengthening when we have dislocation-dislocation interactions. So in this case, the strengthening that we observe will be related to the dislocation density. The higher the dislocation density, the more dislocation-dislocation interactions there will be. So we can look at the shear flow stress. Remember we defined the flow stress before as the stress necessary to continue plastic deformation. And so this is equal to some intrinsic strength of the material. When there's low dislocation density, This row is our dislocation density, and then this is increased by the following term. So in this case, alpha is some coefficient, which usually is on the order of about 0.2 for FCC, 
metals and 0.4 for BCC metals. And then G is the shear modulus. As usual, B is the magnitude of the Burgers vector, and rho is the dislocation density. So we could uh, consider an example just to see what kind of increases in strength we could get from different dislocation densities. So here's our example problem. We want to estimate the strengthening that we could get for aluminum with two different dislocation densities. So aluminum is FCC, so we're going to take alpha to be 0.2. The Burgers vector in this case is given by the square root of 2 over 2, and that's because we know that this is uh, in FCC, and that's the magnitude of it, times A, the lattice parameter, which for aluminum is 4.05 angstroms. For aluminum, G is approximately 25 GPA. So we can plug these things in when the dislocation density is 10 to the 12th per meter squared, we find that delta tau is only 1 MPA. So that's not really adding very much uh, in this into the strength. When the dislocation density goes up to 10 to the 15th per meter squared, the contribution to the strength is now 45 MPA. So this is not uh, as effective a strengthening mechanism as some. However, we are able with not a huge increase in the dislocation density to increase the strength by a, you know, reasonable amount. So this is one way in which work hardening a material can be used in order to increase the strength. So in this video, we looked quickly at the different kind of strengthening mechanisms that were possible and went through the equation for strain hardening and talked about how strain hardening works. In the following videos, we will talk about the other strengthening mechanisms that are possible for metals.